Learning bird songs is not easy, but it doesn't have to be hard. There are tricks to it. First mistake a lot of people make is trying to learn too many all at once. This morning, let's just do four. Four. Grouping bird songs up into categories makes it easy because you just take one category at a time. And this morning we'll take trills. There's only four birds in Maine that do good solid trills. Just four. Today, just learn the trills in your own neighborhood. In my case, I have all four right around my house. Like the pine warbler, they just won't shut up. Trill is uh, a series of quavering notes, like, you know, this, this flute. The birds doing it where you are may be different. Some trills are so fast, they sound more like buzzes, so that's a, another group. All the trills sound alike, except they're not. All right, fine, I'll start with the pine warbler. The problem with pine warblers is that they often do this from way up at the top of a pine where you can't see them in the needles. Except for the song, most people wouldn't even know they were there. It's a strong, sweet trill, and it doesn't vary much between individuals, so it's a good one to remember first. Although they're usually up in the treetops, sometimes they'll come down. They will occasionally forage in the ground if that's where the food is, and when they first get back from migration, they will come to feeders a little. Pine warbler, strong, sweet trill. It helps to have that one default bird, the one triller that you know best. In my case, it's a pine warbler. They nest right over my roof. Because once you know that one, you can compare everything else to the one you know best, and it gets even easier. Compare that to the chipping sparrow. It's a dry, insect-like trill, not sweet at all. Pine warbler, chipping sparrow. Chipping sparrows forage mostly in the ground, so when they're around, you pretty much know it. Often they'll sing from low branches instead of way up high, so that helps. Dark-eyed junco. This one sounds like an old-fashioned ringing telephone, quavering between two different notes. <laughs> Ring of an old-fashioned telephone. Anybody in the 30 is not going to get this. Juncos can vary quite a bit between individuals, but they all have that ringing quality, the old-fashioned telephone ringing quality. Pine warblers sing up in the tall pine trees, and that's the only place you're ever going to hear them sing. Chipping sparrows can be around anywhere, the open edges of woodlands, uh, city parks, parking lots, uh, out in the woods along logging roads, right along the edge. Juncos can be just about anywhere. They go up in the woods to breed, but they'll start singing in migration. Juncos can be everywhere except one place, swamps. Just about every wetland in Maine has swamp sparrows. Doesn't even have to be a very big wetland. Any wet spot with maybe a cattail is all it takes. They are everywhere. And of all the trillers, they have the slowest trill. Very slow, very sweet liquid. Well, you get the idea. Of course, it gets really easy when they're dueling like this. Hey, can you hold it a minute? I'm trying to talk here. And of course, if it's in a wetland, it's a swamp sparrow. You're not going to find chipping sparrow, dark eye junk, or pine warbler in there. Swamp sparrow, slow liquid trill. Okay, those are the solid trillers, but I'll give you a one more bonus, palm warbler. This one's kind of a loose, rattly trill. Just, just not as smooth as the others. It's kind of messier than the other four trills, so I don't usually lump them together, but you, you can if you want. The funny thing is all five of these birds get back in April. I've had weeks to practice now. You better get started. By the way, if this was helpful, 
give it a like because there's a bunch of migrants that are just about to flood back into Maine. And if you want to know how to identify them by ear, well, maybe I can help. Or maybe I can just keep all these secrets to myself.